Right, okay, folks. Welcome to another nice and nasty episode 23, I think. I can't remember. It doesn't matter anyway. Right, I'm delighted to have uh, uh, somebody who watches my channel and is also a good friend. I think we've got to know each other over the, the last sort of uh, five years or so. Uh, many of you guys will probably know this guy. It's uh, Colin Jones, a.k.a. Ponder. How the hell are you, you uh, Welsh bastard? How are you? Hello, hello, everybody. I'm doing really fine. I'm glad to be on this amazing podcast series. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, pro- I think we've probably uh, we've just about covered everybody that wants to be on it um, from the kind of watches my channel. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, you were, we, to be fair, you know, you and I have been trying to get this uh, in the can for quite a while. but uh, Indeed. Indeed, real, real life, pesky real life does kind of, kind of get in, get in the road from time to time. So you're keeping well, Colin. I'm, I'm talking like I've never spoke to you. I mean, I speak to you all the bloody time anyway. But uh, <laughs> yeah, just, just to let our kind of our listeners a wee bit background information. Um, just tell us a wee bit about yourself. And I know, obviously, you've got your own uh, YouTube channel. How did that come about? Okay, well, YouTube I got interested in years ago. Um. I put my first one up, which was just a short thing, which which was a, 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 a Mickey take. I took a clip of um, Life of Brian and said, this is the new Gillette razor blade. Whenever they're coming up with more and more blades. So it was the nine-bladed sword bit. So that was my first upload many years ago. Um, I and It was 10 minutes maximum back then. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I was doing little bits, occasionally uploading cycle camera videos um, with a very shaky and poor quality camera. But yeah, most of the time it was just nonsense um did cycles more often and then i decided why don't i do one specific for retro because i'm getting into this hobby quite deeply now i may as well set up a, a, a youtube channel for retro no it, it was longer by now it was well well evolved and you could even put high resolution video high definition videos in so i started that up and so i got two channels running now one's for random crap and the other one's for retro stuff um i put a lot of my live streams up on the retro stuff especially the game challenges occasionally i'll put clips from the request uh, i don't normally put the requests up on youtube but uh, i'll occasionally put clips up from the uh, from games which are quite interesting or which uh, worked out better than expected mm-hmm. but yeah and um i keep them going and um i don't care i i, I never even re- i never really look even at how many subscribers I got, how many views anything got, because I just enjoy doing it. And if if anybody else enjoys it as well. Yes, and, of course, I do my vlogs every three weeks, which um, yeah. I'm putting a bit more effort into these days. Yeah, I think that's the problem with a lot of people. When people start off on YouTube, you know, wanting to make their own content, um, they just become so hung up and preoccupied about subs, subs and views and all that kind of thing, and I was probably a bit like that to begin with. I think you know, it's 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 it, you know, subscribers is like a sort of a, a mark of how well you're doing. But then, as yeah. we know, you know, you look at any you look at any YouTube channel, and you you can take your PewDiePie's and your whatever it is down to my channel and your channel and whatever, and you you'll generally find that you know, ten percent of your subscribers watch your videos, another ninety percent don't. You know, I yeah. think that I think the, the sort of the the more subscribers you get, that seems to be the case. I think maybe slightly when you're starting off, you're quite small. Then it's maybe not quite. It's it's probably maybe fifty percent, whatever. But yeah, certainly if I look at my subscriber numbers, it's uh, it's, it's ten probably ten percent of them actually watch it. Um, yeah. But as you see, I think when you're when you're doing this purely for fun, um, then. It doesn't matter. I mean, from a personal point of view, my subs have literally not moved for months. They've just they they go up a couple, they come down a couple, they go up a couple, we go. It's just stuck. Um, so there's no rhyme nor reason. Um, no, nope. for that, you know, maybe on the, on the odd occasion, if you, you you put out some video that happens to kind of go a bit viral, whatever. But yeah, I always I always think that even like the the, the the, the hobby that we are that we are kind of both into, it's there's very much a kind of ceiling on that, especially in the UK. Um, the stuff that I do and probably stuff that you do as well, it's largely sort of UK based computers. Um, you know, I don't really cover 
consoles at all. Um, if you started making like NES videos and what have you, you're more likely to get, you know, greater views and larger subscribers because people in America are going to watch it. Maybe people in Japan are going to watch it. Um, but if you're concentrating, like I do specifically, you know, Commodore 64, Spectrum, Atari, whatever, it's it's a very, 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 very kind of small uh, interest. Um, and, you know, if you look at any, if you look at any other kind of YouTube channels that have been going a long time, they're not that much more than I've got. Yeah, there's a couple of well, there's like Steve Benway who was who was he was making videos before YouTube was even a thing. He got in very early doors. Um, he's got quite a, quite a lot more. But guys like Lawn Boys post 1975 and uh, Lactobacillus Prime and all these guys, they're all they're all much the same as what I've got. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, if you're not doing it for money, then it, it's it's irrelevant. It's well, it's it's not irrelevant. But because if you weren't, if nobody was watching your videos, if you're getting zero views, then you'd be, you know, you'd be thinking, well, what, what am I doing with this? <laughs> yeah, it, I, I like this. I like, I got to be honest, I like the small community. And again, you're saying with the consoles like the NES and the Mega yeah. Drive and the Satan, I never had them. So I got no experience of them. If I was going to them, it would be completely blind. Yeah. But as you know, I got my Vic 20, Commodore 64, and, mm. and, and Amigas. I actually, do stream with them quite regularly and they're my core they're the ones i know the best and to me the smaller audience it feels more cozy more personal so i actually prefer that to a larger audience yeah i i'm i'm, I'm exactly the same don't get me wrong it's, it's always nice when you get a, a new comment by somebody that you've never heard of whatever you think oh whatever you know you saw somebody from south africa watching your channel whatever but uh, yeah, yeah yeah when you're not when you're not when you're not doing it for money um then it's then it's pretty irrelevant so how, how long did you have your uh your like retro gaming channel was that was that been a, a long time it's been a few years i can't remember exactly how long now i haven't kept track but yeah it's been it's been about six years for my retro channel uh, and it's been about 16 years for my main channel so yeah, yeah. it's quite early just just to massage my ego somewhat i'm always and I'm, I'm i'm always genuinely interested to know how somebody has stumbled across my channel i, I can't remember if you ever told me how did you get to know about it um it came up in my youtube recommended list and i um started watching more and more videos and then i started getting interested in you personally as a as an actual person so i started yeah. watching the friday waffles and then i started interacting on anything and that's how we and it all it all sort of snowboarded from there oh, it's, it's uh something that's um still going and something i'm very happy to still going <laughs> that's the thing though i mean yeah, a lot of people you know they completely diss the internet is just this hive of yeah villainy and scum and whatever and people that are out to take money off you and that a lot of that is true but I think, uh, I think you know, YouTube. Uh, I have, I have certainly made a lot of new friends through uh, through the, the the community of YouTube. You know, to the point that you and I have met each other a number yeah. of times. We've been down to arcade club. We've, uh, did we meet in Blackpool? Yeah, we did. Of course, we did. Before. You were bloody. You were running about with a microphone, weren't you? At one point, I was at the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it is, it's it's not just a group of sad individuals watching uh, people making videos. We do actually interact, uh, and I, I mean, I think it's I think I'd be safe to say that if we all lived, you know, within 10, 15 miles of each other, we'd probably socialise uh, in a real life basis, you know. But uh, unfortunately, due to distance, that's not really something we can do. Other than we no. can socialise, we can socialise online and that kind of stuff. There we go. My channel was created 2nd of November 2019. So oh, right, okay. Almost yeah. five years ago. There we are. I'm oh. going to try, I'm going to find my original channel now. Because, yeah, just while you're doing that, you can, you can tell the viewers or tell the listeners, I should say, you do, you, do you, is it, you cycle to work every day? Yes, I do. Right. And how, how far is it? You, you it's six miles each way. And I use the main roads each way. Yeah. And, how, um, it's quite interesting at times. I'm I'm pretty much used to it now, so I can stay safe. But uh, I tell you what, for somebody who's, uh, I can see why quite a lot of cyclists use the pavement because it. If you're not, if you don't know exactly what you're doing, 
you're going to run into trouble. Yeah. Well, that's 18 that. years, my main channel, 22nd of, 22nd of August, 20,000, 20, 20, 2006. 20, 2006? So that yep. must have been, did YouTube not only start in like 2005 or something? So you must I think it was, it was pretty, soon, uh, pretty yeah. soon after YouTube started, yeah. when I As soon as I saw, oh, you can create your own channel now, I thought, let's give this a go. <laughs> Yeah, you're you're a technical person. Where does yeah. YouTube actually store all these videos? Have they got like uh, thousands, they got, thousands of drives or something? Or they've got and they got probably got thousands of hard disks all running yeah. all running in service in server farms. Yeah, it's a massive storage. I, yeah, it it's... takes it takes huge amounts of energy as well. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's quite it's quite the quite the quite the setup to be honest. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of people. They dismiss YouTube as being like this evil empire and what have you. But when you actually think what you're getting, what they're yeah. offering you, they're offering you a, a platform where you can record videos, you could make yeah. a film, yeah. you could record yourself singing. You know, there's there's people that have obviously made, have gone on to become, you know, renowned stars through the power of YouTube. Uh, yeah. And they're doing it all for free. You know, yep. so uh, yeah, that kind of annoys me. I, I, I don't, I don't complain much about how YouTube run it. They got to run ads, for instance. One thing I do have a complaint about, which will be coming up in my next vlog, is silently deleting comments. They should let the person whose video the comment is on know that this comment was there and give them the chance to review it. But they've been silently deleting. Whether that's a bug or not, I don't know. But yeah, it's um, it's something that's getting to be a bit of a bug. Bear in mind. I have seen, yeah, I've seen a few people uh, like say that they've put comments in my video and then yeah. asking me if I've deleted them. Oh, I, I don't delete comments. No. I, I think I've, yeah, I've done that maybe once. Um, is that so? You think it's? I mean, I can't imagine if if you were putting up something that was uh, obviously kind of rude or offensive, then I would imagine. Oh yeah, any, I can understand that. Yeah, I've got a feeling it might be down to a lack of cloud sync. I mean, as I say, you know, we say where they store it. Well, it's not on one, in one place; it's in many places. And if the synchronization is is being is is again buggy, that might be what's causing it. But it's still something that we, they really should sort out. Mm. But because they're a business and it's probably just a small problem to them, it's not affecting their bottom line. They're not going to do anything about it. Aye, aye. But I'll still keep using it. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, you know what people have every now and again will say, "Oh, we're going to move away from it," um, and you know, I don't think there's really anything yeah. else out there. I mean, the, the the one platform which I don't use either to watch or uh, record is Twitch. Um, yeah. I know, I know you're a Twitch user. I mean, yeah. I always, I always think when I think of Twitch, I think of sixteen-year-olds playing Call of Duty. <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, most most of the people I I follow on Twitch is all re is retro. Mm. Um, in fact, I think there's one or two science channels, but most of it is all is retro. And of course, I I only regularly watch about two or three, to be honest, mm -hmm. um, because it's, it's it's a time factor. Um, and sometimes they'll stream together, and so I got multiple streams open at the same time. I can't keep track <laughs> of them all, but I focus on one when I see something interesting, that sort of thing. But yeah, I, I do go on Twitch a lot, um, and um, of course, I I do my live streams i do my kerfuffle mm -hmm. kerfuffle streams my everything c64 challenge streams along with requests vic 20 requests amiga requests and i also got my um i do the tubers high score challenge as well now that's who, just video that's just yeah. that's just the gameplay that's who not no, run, no cam no mic who actually yeah. runs that the tubers channel what is that exactly? i think that's lucas rainford runs that oh, i've heard, I've and, heard the um, name i don't know him, but i've heard the name yeah I met him at Blackpool. He's a he's a nice guy. Yeah. How how was Blackpool then? Now, as far as I'm concerned, the event itself the event itself is getting a bit stale. Yeah, you know, I've it's bland. The machines the years. machines are yeah. usually faulty, uh, or they've got some problems with them, or there's crowds around them, and you can't get to the ones that are, are actually working. Uh, the computers are most interesting. I mean, I had I had more more use of the computers this year than anything else. Mm -hmm. Didn't bother with the stage in the event in the event hall. Saw a couple of panels, which uh, the ones I went to were good because I, I really I they, they I, I, I pick and choose. Mm -hmm. um, on the, but on the whole, it's getting a bit stale there. Uh, however, 
I'll keep going because the people you meet there will never get stale. And that's the best part of it. That's why I go mainly is for the people, to meet people. Yeah, yeah. How, how far does it take you to get to, to Blackpool? It's um, it's about five and a half hours. And I've been doing train so far. But I think from, from next year onwards, it'll be car. Because I'll be getting my own car from next year. And uh, I know it's still about five and a half hours. But uh, it'll be my choice and my pace. Yeah, yeah. No, so that's actually that's actually further than it would take. I mean, that's longer than it would take me to get there. Yeah. To be fair, but yeah, I mean, I've been to Blackpool. Oh, I don't know, maybe five, six times. Um, and if you've never been to it, then you'd have a great time. Uh, yeah, you, absolutely. You know, 100%. Would, but I just, yeah, I mean the the. Uh, the, the machines, it's the same. It tends to be the same machines over and over again. As you say, there are a lot that tend not to work. Um, the retail hall, it's, it's <laughs> I didn't it's like over, anything in the retail. It's, for overpriced. My it's overpriced. I don't care what anybody says. I know. I know they'll say, well, you know, when you buy on on eBay, you run that. You've got to wait and get delivered. You run the risk of the thing not working, whatever. But uh, yeah, some of the. Uh, I was down, where was that? I was at NERG uh, a few months ago. And what the hell was it? There was a there was a guy selling eight big games. And what what was it again? There was a Spectrum game. And he was wanting like 65 quid for it. And I looked at him like, and I went on eBay and they were selling it for like eight quid. In fact, I just, yeah. that's just a, a kind of, uh, what do you call it? A segue. I... I'm a, I'm a, probably like yourself, I'm a member of various like retro for sale type uh, sites. And there was a guy who was selling, what is it, what is it called again, where you, you get it rated and it'll say, oh, this is a 9.6. Oh, the, the, the water grading. Ah, it, it gets yeah. graded. That was the one where, remember about five years ago, a Super yeah. Mario 64 sold for like 4 million, which I think is, it was all, it was a con. It was people to say, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll, yeah. Sell it for that, and we'll give you the money, and probably no money exchange hands. Hundred percent. There was somebody selling a graded, a nine point six graded Breath of the Wild Zelda, and I, I, I couldn't help, I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. I went on the on the Amazon, and it was sell. You can buy it brand new for, I think it's fifty four quid. So <laughs> I just, I just put alternatively buy it here for fifty six pounds from Amazon, brand new. <laughs> and then the guy goes, oh, but it's a it's a hundred. I think it was in America. It was like two hundred. He was wanting three hundred dollars for it, and it, he says, oh, but it costs a hundred dollars to get it graded. And I thought maybe I'm just being stupid. But I, <laughs> I understand the concept of buying like a forty five year old game and saying this game is forty five years old, but it's in mint condition. It's like nine point eight, you know, out of ten. I get that. Why would you get a brand new game that you can go in and buy off a, a shelf? Why would you? Why would somebody buy? Because surely when you buy off Amazon, it's going to be a nine point nine or a ten. I don't get that. I don't. I don't understand it one little bit. And then again, I'm not. I'm. I'm not actually that way inclined. I'm not cash minded. I'm. I'm enjoyment minded. As long as I got yeah. enough to live on that and and and, and live comfortably, that's me. I'm not looking. To make a quick buck at any time, uh, so a, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get the mindset. If you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm obviously in the process of trying to like get rid of some stuff. I have sold a couple of machines uh, in just in the last couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, that that really annoys me when you see people obviously just out to try and hoodwink people and get as much money as you can. But you know, it's the same for anything. It's, it doesn't matter yeah. what it is, whether it's bloody concert tickets or magazines or comics absolutely or whatever whatever absolutely. you know but uh, anything i see as a rip off even if i want it bypass i can i can live without it yeah yeah talking of bargains uh, yeah, my girlfriend did buy me my little ear pods so i've got them for my birthday coming nice up. nice so, uh, yeah looking, looking forward to them so anyway listen we better crack on with this uh nice and nasty um to anyone that's just uh this is the first one you've listened to. Nice and nasty. It's effectively Desert Island Discs. Um, I will ask my guest to pick three games uh, to take to said island. These are the only three games they will ever, ever get to play ever again. They'll never play anything else apart from these three games. It can be anything. It could be an online game. If you, if somebody picked 
Uh, World of Warcraft, yes, there are people out there playing it against you. So, you know, Wi-Fi, whatever it is, you've got all that. But my own take on it is I want to, uh, I want you to pick three games that, for whatever reason, you just wish never existed. Um, they should be banished and forgotten about in you know, the midst of time. It can be any reason. It could be the game was overpriced, it was shite, it was too short, it was unplayable, or it led on to a genre of game that you simply hate. I mean, I've had people picking Doom as the game they would banish because they, they hated the fact that it led on to online, which then led on to Call of yep. Duty and all that bollocks. Um, yep. So hopefully you've got your list there, Colin. It's in front of me here now. Fantastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to we're going to start off with the nice stuff. I'm going to ask you to, uh, in no particular order, pick a game, one of your three. Tell me why you would take that to the desert island uh, and just talk me through it. Yeah. So choice right, the number first, one. The first one is is uh, is is right. It's it's one of the close things. Now it's a Commodore 64 game. It's not the best Commodore 64 game by any means. But it's still my favourite. It's still my favourite. It always will be an ass jump man. And um, the right. original so jump man, yeah. it's got 30 levels and every single one of them has unique features. It's a little bit janky with some things, like with the bullets, but <laughs> it's it's just got so much replayability value. Mm -hmm. The sounds, while well, simple, they're effective and actually help you as well because when you hear that shot you know there's a bullet coming and to look out for it <laughs> um it's just it's just so oh let's have one more go i mean i, I even played that one at blackpool on the 64 there uh because they had an easy flash there and jump man i played just the first just the first few levels um the basic levels and i managed to complete it i think i lost one life from cold play the game? i haven't played it for a while so yeah I do enjoy the game. It does get very tricky, and I've never completed it. So, if I was oh, stuck on the desert island, I thought you said you completed it. There. What did you never say? completed it? Right, um, I, not I in one go. I played every single level because when I had the disc back in the back in the eighties, I, uh, I used to rename the files so I could play every single level. Um, <laughs> so I can clear every single level, but not all in one game. Not in one game. Uh, yeah, you're right. so, but, yeah, but, but the replayability value. I mean, I mean, if I was stuck on a desert island with Jumpman, I'm sure I'd complete it eventually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm very familiar with the game. I've not played it for a wee while. I mean, I think I've played it in some uh, some recent uh, live streams. But yeah, to, yeah. to the uninitiated, Jumpman. Uh, there was Jumpman, then Jumpman Junior. I think. Yeah, Jumpman was Junior wasn't a sequel to Jumpman. Jumpman Junior was a cut down version that would fit in a single load on cassette because the original came on disc and it wouldn't fit on cassette ah, right. because of the multi load. All ah, right, okay, I, I didn't know that. So, yeah, Jumpman yeah. Junior is a condensed version of how has yeah. it got like has completely it got... different levels, yeah. but it's not a sequel, it's a version that was released so it could fit in one load on a cassette. Yeah, cool, yeah, right, right. No, I, I never realized I always, I always just automatically assumed it was some sort of uh some sort of sequel but yeah it's it's a it's a platform game it's in what a single screen um i think i would be right in saying the graphics are absolute shit yep um you know the animation i mean the the the, the main character is like three or four pixels and he's got it looks like he's got big cement boots when he's running yeah. like, you know the animation is absolutely pish um it's you know, it makes uh, it makes Beam Rider look like a a, a PS5. <laughs> um, but and it's what we talk about, and it's what I talk about all the time. It is it is content over substance. The playability, yep. it's 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 a great game. Um, and as I said, I have played it before, and I remember I remember playing it back in the day, and just think, oh god, this game, this game's shit. Look at it, and then. Before you know it, two hours have gone past and you're still playing it. Yeah. Um, and I'm one one thing I love about this, and I see it every time. One thing I love about doing this podcast series, it gives me games. I go, I need to play that now. I need to play that now. And what I, what I'm what I'll, I may do at some point, maybe when I get to uh, nice and nasty thirty, I might write down all the games that people have picked and say, "There you go. You want a good game to play, folks? Fill your boots. There's there's thirty games that people have picked." You know yeah. what I mean? Because you're getting 
guy, guys like yourself and everybody that I've, that I've uh, had on this, these people have played thousands and thousands of games. And so for them to be asked to pick three games, you know you're going to get, you're going to get good games. Um, yeah. So yeah, Jumpman, yeah, absolutely. Stole believe it or not, Jumpman uses bitmap graphics. It's not character graphics. He actually uses the bitmap screen, so he can change bits of the screen without affecting anything else very easily. But you see that that, that means, is rather clever, to be honest. That means bugger all with me. You can lame in serums, man. <laughs> so <laughs> what what does that mean then? Is it like it's, anyway? it's, it's like if you like a high res mode? So rather so rather than drawing with characters. Use a defined characters or whatever. You're actually drawing straight to the screen. That's what that is. Right, that still means absolutely nothing to me. It sounds it sounds impressive. So, what 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 does that actually mean? Is it was that harder to do or was it easier to do? Um, well, let's put it this way: you won't be able to smooth scroll it because it's more it's it's a, it's a fully it's a full eight K. I think it is for the screen. Mm. Rather than rather than one K, it's a full eight K for the screen. So it's more it's more difficult to work with as a programmer. But because it's a static screen, it works perfectly. Right, and was that so? Was that so? Was that easier to program back in the day then? No, it wasn't. Though it's all they had on the Spectrum. The Spectrum right. was just that; it had no character. It was just that high definition screen. Mm -hmm. But they managed with that. Most of the time on the Commodore sixty four, they were lazy and used characters. But in this one, it was not was not the case. They used the bitmap. Right. But yeah, it was interesting. Still means nothing to me, but it, it's impressive. Just, yeah, play it. It, <laughs> it was released uh, by Epix Software. Yep. Them, it's, it's mental to think that... Wait, when did that come out? When did the game get 1983, released? 1983, I think, or 84. It's mental to think that a year later they put out summer <laughs> games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you compare the animation of uh, the, uh, the, the wee guy running to light the torch. And then you look at that, but uh, yeah, that, that's the quintessential. I can feel a video coming on games that are absolutely pish graphically, that are yeah. fantastic games. That, that's what's good to me. February 26th, 1983, it was released. When was that? Just a second. <laughs> February 26th, 1983, that was written. It was released. Yeah, so it was it was early it was early doors. It was early days, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, like I says, the the playability was uh, was something else. So playability, well, something else. Yeah. yeah, you've set the bar bar hard. Uh, you've set the bar high, I should say, for uh, game number two. Game number two. This will be an arcade game. Um, I do see it occasionally in arcades, and I did see it um, at Blackpool Arcade Club. And this is Star Wars arcade game, the vector game, Color Vector. Mm -hmm. It's just so fluid. There is nothing quite like it. And there's nothing quite like using that original yoke either. As long as it's properly calibrated, of course, because it wasn't this year and so it wasn't much fun to play. But that is one game I'd really like to just sit down and play for a while and actually get good at. Because I've seen people good at it, so I know it can be done. And um, it's just one game I can, I can just keep going back to time after time after time and get enjoyment out of it every single time. Mm -hmm. It's just the speed, the fluidity, even the music and the speech just adds to all the atmosphere. Yeah. Sat in that cabinet. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just pure nostalgia arcade. And as long as it could be maintained to perfect working condition, I would sit and play that a lot, all the time. Mm -hmm. You've probably seen you can buy the is it the yes one up and yes Steve, I've seen that it's Steve um it's, it looks good yeah. very yeah. expensive and very room consuming you need to you'd need a space set up specially ah. for it and uh, that sort of thing is just even if I had the money I wouldn't have the room otherwise I'd love it so yeah. I would I'm going to be extra generous you can have the sit down one if you want or would you prefer the stand up one yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the sit down one. It, it, it'd have to be the sit down one. It would have to be the sit down yeah. one, because that's the one where you get the, the the feeling of nostalgic arcade back to back back to the days in Barry Island in the summer holidays, sat down <laughs> in that thing and um, and crashing all the time. Basically, I can do a lot better now. I can get I can get to about stage even if I start on the medium level. I can do a few death stars, but. Um, Back then, it was I was terrible. I, I was struggling with the first things. I've even I've even gone through stages and completed all towers, 
uh, in the actual arcade game. So yeah, it's 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 something I would really love to put more time into, mm. and uh, yeah, good at basically. Yeah, unfortunately, it's, it's a game that unless you've got the proper like yoke, whatever you want to call it, it's just yeah. it does. You need you need it, uh, to me. I was actually I said I was. Uh, well, we were talking before we came came live. I was. Uh, I was Excuse me. <laughs> he dropped your dinner or something. <laughs> My son's preparing food, and he dropped the knife under the cat bowl. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this, I was, this I was, is the most chaotic chaotic audio stream, people. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was. I was. We were talking earlier on. I was very fortunate enough to uh, to be at a place uh, yesterday or two days ago and uh, they had uh, a stand-up Star Wars which I nice. was playing and I again I keep going on about it but where I grew up I I never I wasn't living anywhere near arcades so you know a lot of the arcades 99% of the arcades completely bypassed me the first time I got to play games like know, Paperboy and Rush uh, Green Beret, all, 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 in fact, all the arcade games really. Um, it was when I got my Commodore 64 and I would play a game. Um, you know, apart from like the, the local chippy or the sports center, there's all an occasional game. But uh, Star Wars was one of these games I didn't know. It. I mean, I, we're not talking about the film here, but I didn't know anything about the game. I think I probably saw, saw pictures in magazines, but I never got to actually try it uh, until when would it be? I was down at a, a place called what the hell was it called Re- Retrocade. Now I'm talking, I'm talking early 2000s. Um, there was a group of us from Yak Yak, which was like Jeff Minter's forum, went down, and myself, Jeff Minter was there. There was about there was about 15 of us went down to this place. I can't even remember where the hell it was. It was right down in the bottom arse of uh, England. And uh, Arch Archer McLean was there. He was actually, and that was that was the little anecdote that I had. I was, uh, I was, I'd seen Archer. In fact, no, I hadn't, I hadn't seen Archer McLean at that point. I was in the arcade, and I was trying to get put a credit into a machine that wasn't working. And I heard a voice going, hey, "Oh, hang on a second, mate!" And I stood up, and he, I saw saw this hand come round, press a couple of buttons. He went, "There you go. There's a couple of credits." And I turned around, it's bloody Archer McLean. I'm like, fucking hell. Uh, and then outside was his, uh, <laughs> his red Ferrari, the Jimmy White 147. Uh, nice. Or, yeah, or AM 147, I think it was. But uh, anyway, yeah, Jeff Minter was there and they had a Star Wars cabinet. And I remember playing it then. And I didn't really, I didn't really gel with it. But over the last probably 10 years, any opportunity I get to play it down at Arcade Club or play Blackpool, whatever, it's... It's. It would be easy to say, oh yeah, it's only popular because it's Star Wars. You know what? You could take the reference. You could call it. You could call it something completely different. Remove the reference to Star Wars. It would still work because it's. It runs vector graphics, which yes. is a graphical style which has not, it hasn't aged at all. You know, you look at a you look at a Vectrex or Asteroids. It still looks beautiful. The difference with Star Wars, it was colourful. It was on a big screen. You've got obviously the sound effects just add to it, really, really add to it. But I think the piece de resistance for me is the yoke controller. It's just you can play it okay with a mouse. You can play it okay with a mouse. It's just not. It don't feel the same. It's not the same game. No, no, no. Yeah, just the. I'm actually, as I'm, I'm talking to you here, just now, I'm pretending I'm using it. Yeah, I mean, you're gripping the either side of this controller and you're tilting it back to move the crosshair up, pushing it forwards. It's just, it shouldn't work, but it's just so instinctive, and it's just, yeah. it just flows, and it's a, it's a beautiful slice of like arcade. Uh, and so I do, I do understand. I used to, people used to say, uh, oh, the best arcade game ever, is Star Wars. I'm like, ah, oh, bollocks. That's just a kind of, it's a bit of a kind of gimmick. I do get why people pick it because it's such a beautiful game to play. It's so much fun. It's it's not like moving a joystick up doing left and right. If you were to replace the yoke with a joystick, it just wouldn't be the same. No, no. You know, it wouldn't it's, work. It's, all, it's probably the one machine over any other machine that I can think of where the controller really lends itself to making the game. And so when you play it in MAME, yeah, whilst it's good fun, it's just not the same. 
Um, so yeah, I can. So I mean, you've 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 obviously got that just as something that you can just enjoy. It's not yep. like a long game. It's maybe is it even a, a game that you would use to chase high scores with? Or is it just you just can you can you can do high scores. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Uh, I know one of the uh, one one of the guys in the retro community last year at Blackpool when they had the arcade version there. They took it away because it got broke. It came back. All the scores were cleared. So he went on there and and, and smashed the high score again. So yeah, the high score is um, <laughs> you can do the high scores, and it keeps a few of them as well by default. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there we go. Uh, another Stonewall classic. So. Before we get into the nasty stuff, I'll give you one more game, Colin. What's it going to be? Okay, well, it's going to have to be one of the elites, isn't it? Because that was my favourite game on most platforms. Now, I was thinking about, for a long time, would it be the original Elite? No. Would it be Frontier? No. Uh, Elite Dangerous? I've never played that, but other people have chosen that, and... While I've got it, I've only done the tutorial levels, and it seems a bit overwhelming. But the one I would choose would be Ulit, mm. which is a multi-platform game, and it's actually still being developed. And uh, free to download. You can get add-on expansions, and it's built on the original Elite. So if you're familiar with the original Elite, it plays quite, quite similar. It can play almost identical to the original Elite, uh, only it's, of course, fully filled shaded polygons. And it's as smooth as silk. It's just so playable. I mean, it's just like you can pick up from pick up from there. And of course, you can uh, extra ships. You can buy you can buy different different ships again, uh, right from the smallest to the largest. But yeah, it's 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 um it's uh it's like taking the original elite and just putting all the bells and whistles on it without yeah. actually doing anything. It's it's yeah. a wee bit like I suppose it's a wee bit like the. Uh, Cannonball, which is like a nod to Outrun, but it's not a nod to Outrun. It is Outrun, but yeah. they've just they've just enhanced it so much. I think it runs at sixty frames per second and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so is this Ulite? Uh, it's spelled double O L I T E. I think it is. Eh? That is correct. Ulite. Yeah, I have I have played that many 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 moons ago. So it's still getting developed, and is it? Still, yeah, I think the it... latest release was about two years ago. I think. Oh, well, I actually I'm... updated it the other day. I only have a. Maybe you can send me the link to it if that's alright. Or is yep. it quite easy to find? You just put it's a elite, elite uh, dot space. Dot space. Okay. Uh, and you're saying you're saying you can buy ships. Do you mean oh, you four buy... years? What's that? Four years was the latest release. It took the thirtieth um, of August, twenty twenty. But of course, add-on expansions are being released all the time and updated all the time. And are they so, yeah. are they available within this website or something to get them? Yep, you can download it straight from the website. You can download it for Windows, Mac, or Linux. Available for all of them. Okay, and it's you're you're talking about buying ships. Do you mean buying and buying in-game currency, right, no right, real right. currency? You know, you credits. You buy it with credits that you've earned in the game. Oh, that's the normal nice. way. So they've taken the original freight. They've taken the original Elite, but because that, that's the thing about Elite, and I mean, you know, I would. I, I would possibly pick Elite as one of my games uh, yeah. if somebody was to invite me on to the Nice and Nasty. Um, the the slight downside to that would be once you've got all, oh, you've got your military laser, you've got your docking station, you've got all that. It's just a question of building up your uh, your credits higher and higher and higher and higher. Whereas if you can buy extra ships, that's nice. So they've taken the original yeah. Elite and just, if they're just as you say, added bells and whistles. And yep, and you can, of course, with the expansion packs, you can add extra missions. So you've always got something new to do. And are all these expansion packs, like, are they all linked on that uh, elite.space? They're all there. They're all right. there. It's the, uh, you got, the basically, the menu is about elite, what's new, download, getting started, screenshots, expansion packs, and community. Nice. So that's all on the website. I'll need to. All free. Need to all free that. to download. Yeah, no, that, that's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's. I'm sure everybody that's listening to this has has played Elite. It's yeah, I mean, it was it was revolutionary when it came out. You know, I don't know how many how many uh, 
planets were there in the original, like 10,000? Oh, it's eight, eight, eight galaxies and 8,192 planets per galaxy, if memory serves. Uh, well, that's All right. procedurally generated. I think it was about um, 4K of code that did the lot. <laughs> I can't remember the exact numbers, but it was a silly short amount of code that did all those oh. galaxies and all those planets. Absolutely insane. Um, so yeah, it's it's a game that you just kind of keeps giving uh, over and over again. So I mean, so your your, your three games, you've got your uh, you've got your you've got your kind of arcade uh, itch with uh, Jumpman Junior. That's a kind of quick kind of yeah sort of twitchy kind of twenty minute got, go yeah. fix. The original Jumpman. Yeah, the original, yeah, original Jumpman. Jumpman. And then you've got your arcade game, which I completely forgot. What was that again? Star you know, Wars. Star Wars, of course. It's Star Wars. Talking about that a few minutes ago. Again, that's another that's another kind of bite-sized thing. So two of the games that you've picked, is, it's not they're not games that you probably want to play for like 10 hours at a time. Um, but when you want your quick fix, after you've, after you've been spending hours collecting your firewood for your fire and to make a smoke to hope for somebody will come and rescue you you think well i'll just have a quick i'll have a quick yep. movie, uh, jump man before uh before i get my leaves and go back and go to bed <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you've got that right. and then obviously yeah, you've got your open-ended game with with a leap yeah um and obviously you know I'm, I'm generous i would allow you to have uh does it does it i don't suppose the game itself you download missions within the game. Is it separate things you download? And it they're and separate things. The expansion. The basic game is uh, is basic game with yeah. basically all the features of Elite. I think you can still actually still buy the ships in the in the basic game. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you got the expansion pack, which has certain things. Uh, e there's even cosmetic things in there for it. So it's uh, it's it's you could even write your own if you knew if you knew the code to use. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and it's all. Oh, silky smooth. So, is it is it polygons? I take it it uses now. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Fill 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 vector graphics. So, yeah, polygons. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I must admit, whilst you know, when you think it, when you think you're elite, you automatically you get all misty eyed and you know teary, and you just you just think of uh, like the BBC version, the the vector graphics. But I always thought that when when the, the sixteen bits came along, the Atari ST, Commodore, Amiga. Being able to play the game with filled graphics was like wow. It, you really yeah. felt like you were you were on a, a sort of like the next generation of the game. Yep. Yeah, no. So excellent. Right. Fantastic. Now the downside. Three games from hell. Uh well it doesn't it doesn't have to be. I've had people pick games that they're not they weren't bad games, but just because <laughs> of what they led on to or whatever. So three games uh, again. You can pick whatever order you want to pick them. What game would? Uh, what, what's the first game that you would uh, like to have never existed, and uh, why? Right, this game is a port of an arcade game that I was actually quite good of, good at when it was in the lo local pub. Um, the Spectrum version came out, and I, my mate got it, and I thought this is great. I can't wait for it to come out on the C sixty four. And when it did, it was utter. Pants, and that's Bomb Jack on the Commodore 64. <laughs> that can do one, really can do one. <laughs> You've got huge sprites, the graphics are ugly, and as I say, the huge sprites, you've got no room to move because the screen is smaller than the arcade, and the collision detection, I'm not sure whether it's pixels or whether it's a box, but the collision detection is horrendous. You can barely move around before getting hit by an enemy. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the arcade game, I used to get all the bombs in the correct order. You can forget that on the Commodore 64 version because you do that, you're going to be dead. <laughs> the music's okay. That's all. That's one good thing you can say about it. But the gameplay itself, I bought that. I played it once, and I was so disappointed. I don't think I ever loaded it again. Was I thought right? complete waste yeah. of money. Yeah. Yeah. So what? What did you do? Yeah, you, well, you didn't have a spectrum at that point, so you just had to. No, you just had I, to just, wait. I just disappointed. Then the next time I played Bomb Jack, I think was on Mame. <laughs> aye, aye. See, that was I was mentioning earlier on about how I I was never I never had exposure to a lot of arcade games. In fact, it was pretty much when Mame came along, suddenly I could play the arcade version of uh, Year Kung Fu. Suddenly I could play the arcade version of Slap Fight. I'd never seen Slap Fight, so the only time I'd seen these games was when they came out in the Commodore sixty four, and I remember 
I can't remember whether I bought it or whether I got a copy of it. It doesn't really matter. But I, I acquired Bomb Jack on the Commodore 64. And the music uh, is great. I mean, anyone that's familiar with... Uh, yep. By the way, if you ever do play it and you hear this, that, 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 uh, you're not hearing me saying, Arcade Perfect, my arse. Because that was, yeah. But uh, yeah, the music, well, I chose that for Arcade Perfect, my arse is. But the music is fantastic. What was it? Mark Cooksey, I think it is. Did the music. Yeah, I think it was Mark Cooksey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really jolly. Um, even the title screen on the C64 is lovely and bright and it does look very much like the arcade. I did actually play, funnily enough, I did actually play uh, Arcade bo- uh, Bomb Jack two days ago at the place we were talking about earlier. Nice. Um, that's literally... Uh, Holly has just renovated that one, got it working. So, oh, um, excellent. I was like the first person to have a wee shot. And yeah, it, it, it's a beautiful game. But I got it on the C64 and I didn't have anything to compare it with. And I actually thought it was all right. I thought, oh, this is a great wee game. It's got brilliant sound, blah, 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 blah. And then it was only over the, the preceding 20 years when I eventually, you know, emulators became a thing. I got to play the Spectrum version. And then I realized, oh, Hang on, although the Spectrum version looks shit, it actually it plays better, it looks like it, it's got the, the, the same screen ratio, uh, it's kind of vertical rather than like horizontal. And then um, when you start scratching beneath the surface of the C64 one, and it, it's horrendous. The yep. bombs, the bombs, well, they look like bombs, they've got square, they're big square boxes around them. Yep. Yep, and there's no like, there's no overlay whatsoever. It's just yeah, blocky graphics all over the place. I don't recall that that ever being something that happened in any other games. I mean, this game that's this, down to the character graphics again. Remember what we seen with Jumpman? Yeah, that's because Bomb Jack uses character graphics. So it's obviously sheer laziness because we're yep. not talking we're not talking about a game. You know, we're not talking about a game that came out in 1983. I mean, I think I'm I'm, I'm probably right in thinking. That Mission Impossible or Impossible Mission, I should say, came out before it. Drop Zone came out before it. These two, whilst I'm not a fan of Mission Impossible, Impossible Mission, it, you know, stunning to look at. Drop Zone, stunning to look at. And then you get Bomb Jack that probably came out after both these games. And it's like, yep. why the hell? How did that yep, get? It was after. How did that Definitely get past after. the, you know, quality control? Um, I mean, I, I do remember. Any- Sorry, Colin. Was there any back then? I think they just wanted to get the game out to make the money from it on Probab- the name. Probably. But, yeah, it's just a lazy, lazy, lazy port. Um, so, yeah, shame on you. I think that was uh, Elite Systems, wasn't it? Yes. It yes. was. So, yeah, why, why did you pick that one? Was it quite literally just you were gutted? It, so yes, it is. It it's the yeah. biggest disappointment I've ever had in buying a computer game. Yeah, because it's, 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 it's going to be top of my list in every one of them. Yeah, <laughs> because it's it's far from the worst game ever. I mean, you, oh you, no, no, you there are worse than that. Yeah, but it's yeah, purely yeah. because, be purely because I used to when it was in the pub, I used to be able to get over a million in Bomb Jack. I've had six hundred thousand odd since, but when it was in the pub, I used to be able to get over a million on Bomb Jack. So I was good at it. I knew the game, and when it came out on the Commodore sixty four, I was just so disappointed. It was nothing like it. Nothing like yeah. it at all. And that's why it's in this list. <laughs> Isn't there, <laughs> is there not somebody working on a new version? Or was that for the there is. Amiga? Oh, it, it has been for many years, but uh, yeah, it's been quiet. I think it's started to uh, uh, show its show its face again. I'll be interested to see when it comes out. I yeah. mean, Graham Howie did an excellent Bomb Jack beer edition on yep. the Amiga, which has got different levels as well. It's, it's a great it's a great conversion. Mm-hmm. Um, but the 64 version can stay in the bin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I totally get it. And if I remember rightly, I think Zap condemned it as well. Zap magazine. So, yeah, excellent. Right. Game number two, Game of Shame. Right. This one is going to be the most frustrating game I played in the kerfuffle of any game at all. Now, you might think it was Shinobi, but no, I actually like Shinobi. Um, that was a controller issue. I was using the keyboard. This game is Columns. I found it as frustrating as hell. Um, couldn't get anywhere in it. As soon as you got, a few, as soon as it started picking up speed, I just could. I just, it just completely lost me. I just couldn't do anything with it. It's it's like, why am I playing this game? 
why am I still playing this game? And I, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I think I was lucky to manage the whole hour. And I have never picked it up again since. And I never will unless it comes up in a challenge for some reason. Yeah, but I think... yeah, I, I won't turn down a challenge. But that game, ah, oh. And yet I've seen I've seen I've seen Lewis London Retro Video Games play it, and he's he blitzes through it. And I'm looking at him and thinking, Oh there, how'd you do that? Because uh, as soon as it starts moving, I just can't I just can't move that fast. <laughs> yeah, I mean I think Lewis Lewis is a bit of a uh a Sega fanboy. Yeah, I mean, for, for the uninitiated, I think Columns was was kind of Sega's take on Tetris always. We know yeah. about Tetris. Um, it was the game that was released, uh, that was bundled with the uh, Game Boy. Just, just as a, again, as a, a slight sideways movement, have you seen, have you ever watched any of the uh, Nintendo World Championship videos? No, no. And Not the reason, Nintendo, there, sorry, the reason there Tetris is because one, Nintendo wasn't my nostalgia. My nostalgia right. was mainly Commodore and computers. Yeah. So what, what I meant to say was, it was Nintendo. There's there's Tetris World Championships. Oh, they've seen. I've seen uh, yeah. those. I haven't seen the World Championships, but I've seen that um, that kill screen. That when when it all started blowing up with oh, Tetris, and getting as far as you can. I, I see. Watching, I did watch that. That was interesting. I was watching yeah. one the other day. There, I think it was filmed a couple of weeks ago, and it was one Amer- I think I don't know one American and one Chinese guy or something. They were like they were going head to head. And the speed at which yeah. this, these things you can't you can't even keep up with it. They're just going boom, 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 boom. They're coming down like a hundred miles an hour, and these guys are able to fit it in. It's like that is the most insane video game skills I've ever ever yeah. seen. I know how they do it. They look at the next, and they already know what they're going to do with the next one while they while they're positioning yeah. and when they're and, doing. And what they'll, it's what getting I, it all off, and I couldn't I couldn't work like that. Apparently, but yeah. what they do is they, they use their fingers and they tap. Yeah. They tap Happening. underneath it or something, and that get, yep. allows you to move faster. But even even yep. if you did have instant speed, <laughs> it's just it's insane, absolutely insane. But anyway, we're kind of going off topic a wee bit. Yeah. Um, columns. So that was. I remember. I've have I I've possibly played columns maybe once, um, and I I think it might have been on a Game Gear. I remember yeah. I, an ex of mine's her. Her little brother got a Game Gear and Columns is on it. Um, but yeah, I, I did. I'm sure I tried it once uh, to see what the fuss was about and I couldn't figure out what I was supposed to do. So what is it about What is it about the game that you just don't like? Is it the mechanics? Is it complicated to play? It's or not it complicated to play. It's quite simple it? to play, but it's completely random. And I can never figure out the patterns quick enough. Um I don't. I, I can't exactly put my finger on what makes it the most frustrating of the puzzle games, but to me, it really is horrific to play. I just do not want to touch it. <laughs> it's even worse than all the fighting games, which are mash, mash, mash. You can still have fun with a bit of mash, mash, mash. Yeah. But this, I'm thinking, well, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just losing this. I just haven't got a clue what what's happening, because the things come up, they and they eventually come down the screen. And it's like I was saying, you look at the next one, but I'm still working on the one that's on the screen. I can't even look at the next one until I got that one positioned, and what? it's already down there before I'm finished with it. Yeah, what is the idea of the game? Are you, have you got to like line up like three things in a row or something? Three or? colours in a row, yeah, or three or more colours in a row. Of course, if you get it right, you can get a maximum of five in these match match games. Right, so... But, um, yeah, it's and did, just... it, did, did they disappear once you get say three purple gems or whatever it is? Do they then disappear and then yeah. everything else can falls? Everything through? else drops down. You can get combinations, right. and things like that. But uh, it's just keeping going. I mean, once once it starts speeding up, I'm thinking I got to put this. Where am I going to put this? Oh, it's down. It's too late. You know, is this did the 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 blocks are down from the top before I even figured out what I'm going to do with them or where I'm going to put them. <laughs> Are you sure you didn't inadvertently put it on like extreme difficulty? No, no, that's, that's the way it is because it starts off nice and easy, but picks up picks up that the, the difficulty curve just it's like it's like you hit a cliff, a cliff wall. Yeah, it just goes like for one to it ten goes straight up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, even I mean, I can play I can play Game Boy Tetris for ages. Uh, the arcade game's a bit more difficult because, of course, it's designed to take money. But yeah. columns, I can't get can't get the grips with at all. And, and it is that, a personal thing because I know people love it. 
but yeah. it's just me. It's just me in this case. Was that the Mega Drive or was that the? Game it was Boy arcade. It was the arcade. Oh, uh, right, right, right. And all, all the games in the kerfuffle are arcade. Right. Yeah. Was that? Was that? Did that come out? Was it that? Did that get released on like the the Mega Drive first? I think it did. It? I think it yeah. did, and then made it to the arcade. Yeah. It's yeah. oh. It just, it just makes my teeth itch. <laughs> Are you not tempted to uh, try like the, the Mega Drive one to see if that's any? No. Any <laughs> yeah, you're, you're bad enough. It's that no. bad. No, it's that bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not tempted to try any versions. And if I see another game which looks like Columns, I mean, there was one released for the Commodore 64 fairly recently. And I didn't, you know, normally I'll, I'll download them and play them on one of my streams, but nope, I'm not touching it. Not yeah. touching it. <laughs> Oh, you do know I'm going to have to go and try and play this bloody game just to see if it's, <laughs> if it's as bad as you make out. Uh, but you're you're considerably better at games than my, me, so if you can't play it, oh, some of them, some of them, uh, some of them, some of them you beat, you, some of them you can still wipe my ass with. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's uh, game number two, right? Game number three, uh, game of shame. Right, this one's a mobile game, and uh, there's a big reasons for me hating this particular one. Um, I played a few of the earlier versions, and I used to enjoy them. And then there was Angry Birds Star Wars. And this one is the one that's going in the bin. Um, and everything related to it then. Because basically, Angry Birds Star Wars, it was offered for free. You could have the full version of the game with supposedly no ads. Buy it on Amazon for free. Bang. There we go. So I had the full version for free on my phone. And I was playing it. I got to the third level. I'm trying to get five stars. And all of a sudden, a pop-up came up and says, well, it looks like you're having trouble here. Why don't you buy this for five ninety nine? A little that. And that was it. I uninstalled, I uninstalled Star Wars. I uninstalled all the Angry Birds before it. And I've never played anything else since of Angry Birds. Um, because straight away, even though you'd bought the game, micropayments. They want more off you. And it basically turned me off every single mobile game since. So I barely played any mobile games since Angry Birds Star Wars. So it completely mm -hmm. ruined mobile gaming for me. And that so, one is definitely going in the bin. <laughs> so, how, so how did it? You, you said that they, 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 they sold this game, full game, no microtransactions, yeah. and it was... No, no ads. Free. Yeah, no, no ads. ads. You had no ads, but they yeah. still had the microtransactions put, pushed in your face. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I've just bought the game. You promised me no ads, but you still want me to buy. We still want me to pay more. You still want me to pay pay for stuff in the game. And and that was it. Like basically turned me yeah. off all mobile gaming. And yeah, I most think modern that, games anyway. I think anything I mean, which requires DLC, I don't. I'm not interested in. And it's all because of that in Angry Birds Star Wars. Yeah. I set I think, it off. I think we've got. Uh, I think we've got like mobile games to thank for microtransactions, and it's oh like, yeah. Every, yeah, definitely. and that I'm I'm like like yourself. Um, I've got a handful of games on my uh, on my phone. Uh, most of them are Jeff Minter games, which are completely free. Um, and the, I think I've got Solitaire, and I've got this one other game where you got to line up blocks, and that is it. Um, but yeah, anytime I do look at a game, I go, oh, that, that looks quite good. I mean, there's a there's a game that. It's getting pushed constantly, uh, like as adverts. If you play, if you're watching YouTube videos, uh, Rage yeah. Shadow Legends. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's the one where all thousands of people and baddies are all marching down the screen, and you're moving left to right and picking up power ups and shooting them, and you oh. get big, massive giants. Something I don't know what it's. I called. know the one. I know the one. But that's only a sub game of the main game. Yeah, and but even you see then, in the advert is only a sub game of the main game. Aye, Most of the game is you, you got three people against three people, and you're fighting like like you're rolling dice. Aye, and it's kind of like it's kind of like a sort of Sim City, age, yeah. uh, Empire of Ages, Ages of Empire, I should say. But yeah. it's, well, it was kind of like that, um, and uh, yeah, but so I've, I've tried that, and it's like you know, it's nothing like the one advertised. But yeah, microtransactions. I think it's something that. We as gamers, we were never ever used to back in the day. We bought a game, whether it was on cassette, whether it was on disc, whether it was on CD, whether it was on cartridge. You bought the game, you switched it on. The, that was the full game. Um, you know, uh, yeah. And as you say, you know, the these. I mean, the thing that's that 
terrifies or doesn't terrify me, but I'm like, it astounds me is if you buy, what did I, I bought a game or I, I was playing a game recently and uh, it might, in fact, I might be in a game I'm just talking about actually. I played it for like a couple, about an hour or something and uh, you could like, oh, I'll, I'll harvest, co- I harvest uh, wheat. Oh, hang on, I'll go to the shop. And one of the options was you could buy like 10,000 credits for you know, ten pounds, blah, blah, blah. and it went up to like ninety nine pounds. Yeah, and to think yeah. it, it's it it seems incredible that somebody is actually going to buy a game for free and then spend ninety nine pounds on virtual currency. It's it's like yeah, it's and and the thing is, it's now it's now broken up. It's now broken into mainstream game, and you know, you buy your your I don't even know what they call it now. It used to be called FIFA. Um, it's called something else now, and I mean, you, you've heard you've heard the the, the stories on the uh, online with, oh my my son's FIFA account was hacked, uh, and he, he had spent like nine hundred pounds on on Lionel Messi's t shirt yeah. and blah blah blah, yeah. blah 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 blah. It's like yeah. holy shit, you know. It's a different generation, but yeah, it's it's not something I'm interested in at all. And the minute if I do happen to download a game, I think well that was quite interesting. I'll just give it a quick go. Within ten seconds, there's an advert. Micro ad is book come out. Yep. Uninstall. Not interested. Yep. yep. <laughs> and Absolutely. Like your... it's, just, it's just it's just the way things are with mobiles, and it's it's not really specific to Angry Birds, but Angry Birds the one that actually Angry Birds Star Wars for me is the one that triggered it. This is the one that threw it in my yeah, face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I mean, I do remember the original Angry Birds, and it was quite a good game. It was you, yeah. you bought it. It was maybe one ninety nine, and the whole yeah. game was there, and it was great. It yeah. was quite it was yeah. something a bit different. I think what the. I mean, it's clever marketing tactics. Back in the day, we would spend I don't know, say forty five ninety nine for Street Fighter Two and the SNES. That was a lot of money. Uh, the game was yours. Now they offer all these games for free. They know they know full well. That kids from bloody five years old upwards have got have got mobile phones, so they can just download all these games completely for free, uh, and then go, oh, "Mom, can I get ten pounds? Would you want ten pounds?" Or, "Oh, I want to buy some credits for Roblox. I want to buy this." Whereas, you know, that's clever marketing. Whereas, if these games, I, you and I as consumers would much rather, I would gladly pay ten pounds. For one of these games, if everything was just there, you could earn. I don't mind earning, having to earn online cre- in-game credits because that's kind of that gives you something to aim for, like getting a new ship and elite, whatever. Um, yeah. I would much rather pay a tenner for a game and know it's my game to play. I don't have to worry about pissing about with, uh, you know, um, in-app purchases. But it's very clever what they've done because they know that you can get a ten-year-old and he's downloaded ten different games. And he'll be pissed on his peers. Oh, can I get five pounds? Can I get ten pounds? And um, um, they're not. They're not actually. They're not actually. That's not their target. They've um, they've got something they call the whale, and that's the one person in like ten thousand who will spend hundreds, th- maybe even thousands of pounds on micro payments. They don't care about all the little ones. It's those, those that one in ten thousand person is that who right? will spend a fortune on them, and that and that's what keeps them going. That's what they're aiming for. The whale, did you say? The whale, yeah. You, you, you. Hang on, let's see. Let's see if you've. Um, I've never heard of that. Let's have a look. If I Is go for right? yeah. micro payments, whale. See if it comes out with. Uh, oh, it's no results. <laughs> but yeah, it, there's videos on it. I, I saw a video on it um, about two months ago, and basically, yeah, with the micro payments, they're targeting. That one one in ten thousand person who is going to spend a bloody fortune on it, mm-hmm. because you see some, you see, you see, it, I've spent all this money on there. Well, that's who they're targeting. No matter what they say, just like, just like, I mean, okay, don't sue me. This is this is my opinion. The gambling sites where they say when the fun stops, stop. If everybody did that, the bookies wouldn't make any any profit. They want people to spend money. Yeah, the same with that. They they're looking for the big payers, not the little payers, the big payers. Yeah, and that's what keeps them going. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and obviously you, you get, like I say, it's, it's now kind of seeped into mainstream gaming, and then you've got your, you've got that that space game which I can't bloody remember, Starcraft or something. The the one that's never ever Lacosa and I have discussed at a great length. 
it's never going to ever get released properly, and people are. Oh yeah, I know, I know the one. You know, I oh, think Star- I think it might be Star Cap, but I'm not sure. Yeah, 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 and people are people are spending thousands of pounds on the the hope that they're going to this game is going to eventually come out, and yeah, it's just it's just created it's created a. a it's created how, how it's created a system of gaming that it's, I've got no interest in. I'm sitting here in my, yeah. my chair at the moment, looking across at all these all these uh, CD games. I can just pick one off the shelf, put it in, boom! Don't need an internet connection to play it. Um, this is the beauty of our hobby, isn't it? This is the yeah. beauty of our hobby. We got access to all these games that you can actually pick up, hold, and own. Yours. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's going to have any more money from you. That's it. And I found it. If you go for microtransaction, Wales, or search, you'll have pages of it. It'll tell you all about them. Yeah, I'll need, I'll need to check that. But then, yeah. of course, that, that kind of also, the, the whole in-game microtransactions and all that kind of stuff. Then even you've got the, the things that you have to be online. And one of the things that I'd say yeah. to, to uh, John here, when I, when I spoke to him, uh, well, it was a few months ago, whenever it was, and I said how sociable soccer... You can all that was it. That's the sort of like the spiritual successor to uh, sensible soccer. Yeah, you've got to be online to play it. Now I can play that on my switch. So if I'm on a bus or a train, I can't play the bloody thing. I've got to be online. What yeah, the point? So is it? <laughs> you know, seriously, bugger off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So now nah, listen, that's yeah, three, three justified. Uh, just recap again, Colin, the three games that you're going to burn. Trust. Bomb Jack on the Commodore 64. Yeah. Columns arcade mainly, but anything like that. Columns can go. Yeah. And of course, Angry Bird Star Wars, which triggered off my uh, distaste yeah. of mobile so, gaming and the it, way it was going. It with wasn't my... so much the game itself was bad, it was just it's led on to it's, it's led, led on, on to genre yeah, of gaming, everything. which unfortunately now you're never you're never gonna not see. I mean, uh, any no. I've I've got an Android phone. If you download any game at all within a minute you've got a bloody advert for ikea at the bottom it's like fuck off you know yeah. I mean, it's, Some, yeah. you know you get apps with ads at the bottom but if i'm going to use an app i will pay to remove the apps uh, to remove oh. the ads and then you don't get any more you don't get anything else and that's fine there but are that, very i would I, I would do the same thing but there are very few games that give you the option to buy the no the, that's the, it the apps. yeah yeah Sad. Anyway, folks, listen. That's I think uh, I think that brings the nice and nasty to uh, an end. Um, I hope you all enjoyed listening. And uh, finally, listen, Colin. Thank you very much for uh, coming on. It's been entertaining as always, Squire. It's been an absolute pleasure, Al. <laughs> yep. Uh, don't be a stranger. I'll no doubt catch you in a, a another video very very soon. Absolutely. Okay. Right. Until next time, guys. As always. Thank you very, very much for listening.